So uh, you're here in the Bosque, uh, and you told me in your application to come that you're in hula hooping. Right. Interesting. <laughs> well, I got plenty of space here for hula hooping. I, I think it's a great thing to get into. Uh, let's talk about that. Sure. So when did you first get into hula hooping and why? Um, a few years ago. And it was because a friend and I just went to a class just for fun. And it's a great creative outlet. So we ended up really liking it and just kept doing it. So what is hula hooping doing for you? Well, I mean, it's a creative outlet. It's meditative and it's challenging. And it's just something I do for fun. My hula hoop goes everywhere with me. It's been all over the world twice. And people seem to really like it. I get crowds sometimes when I'm in public. And they're all smiling. Maybe they just think I'm weird, but either way. <laughs> and you recorded it? Yeah. And where, where can somebody see the videos? I don't post them publicly. You don't post them publicly? Why not? <laughs> because I'm a little bit of a private person. <laughs> well, not if you're here. You can't be private in the Bosque. Yeah, maybe not. Um, <laughs> so I'm thinking that we could go out actually around here and do some hula hooping in the small towns. You want to do that? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Um, I've actually made hula hoops here, and we've given them away in some of the small towns. Uh, the reason I'm interested in hula hooping is because uh, it seems healthy. It seems simple and cheap, mm -hmm. you know. It's uh, sometimes social as people learn. Yeah, of course. And so I'm, I'm kind of hoping to get people moving a little bit more. Uh, that may be even a minor way to com combat obesity. Right. Um, and, uh, yeah, I'd like to actually have some hooping classes here. And That'd people can fun. learn tricks. I, I juggle and, and do some fire spinning and things. Right. But uh, hula hooping could fit right uh, right in with that kind of stuff. Yeah. More circus stuff. Circus freaks. What would you suggest I do here in the Bosque? Let's say I have um, 12, 20 people here and I've got lots of hula hoops. Uh, what, what would I do to set up some hula hooping fun? Beyond, of course, setting up the basics and classes. But how could I kind of take it to a strange new level? We might be able to play some games with them, if we could think of something. Or, yeah, classes I think would be cool. Uh -huh. Classes, maybe even competitions. Yeah, competitions I mean, would be cool. Hula hooping doesn't make me think competitively, but then again, you know, you can turn anything into a game and there could be a reward. Mm -hmm. You know, or the person, for example, if you take people and don't hula hoop at all, and then who, who advances the fastest? Yeah, that would be cool. That would be great. Yeah, or you could have like a set trick that's the goal and then whoever got to it first. Yeah. That'd be cool. Well, we're going to have to think about gamifying hula hooping in the Bosque. Hmm. Sounds fun. Whenever I hula hoop, people kind of laugh at me. Yeah, I would too. <laughs> I don't think I'm going to keep doing it if people laugh at me though. Um, I think the problem is I'm actually like circling my hips the wrong way. I look goofy. My stance looks goofy. I want to look good. Yeah. You got to do the back to front thing. Moving just this way. Yeah. We can have some lessons later if you want. Okay. I don't think I want to record them. Maybe not. That might be embarrassing. Ah, see. Back it's... and forth. Not, not around in a circle. Just forward and back. Yeah, I'm going forward and back. back. <laughs> Why do people always laugh at me when I do this? I'm laughing at Gato yeah. laughing at you. Oh. <laughs> A uh, question about tricks. So you learn the basics, right? Right. And then is there kind of a standard sequence you go through in, in advancing or? It depends. Everybody's different and everybody learns at a different pace. Um, what's cool about hooping is that lots of it is muscle memory. So once you get it once, then you have it for the rest of your life. And it's it's really cool that way. And that's why it's so addicting. So it, there's not really a sequence that you can go in. It's what you're comfortable with and how fast you want to go. And then uh, do you have in mind, like, uh, tricks or things that you want to learn next right now? Yeah, sort of. I'd like to learn more combinations and more off-body stuff. Uh-huh. Off-body meaning? Me meaning off your body. Well, it's... <laughs> you mean like throwing it up or something? Throwing it and rolling it and um, isolation stuff. And things where your hands aren't connecting. touching it. Yeah, yeah. Okay.
when it's coming around, it opens here, which is where you put your arm up, but you're grabbing it and it's coming down. Like when your hand is on the inside rather than the outside, mm -hmm. okay, wait. then it will come down this way. And sometimes it helps to spin in the direction of the hoop. I did that on purpose. Easier with the bigger hoops, they're heavier, the rotation is slower, so you're not having to move quite as fast to keep and it going. And the momentum is more. More momentum with a bigger one. Yeah, there you go. That will help when you're learning to shoulder hoop. Have it like this. Hey, Gato just got it. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> so are there any hoopers that you look to for inspiration? Uh, yeah. Rachel Lust, who I follow on YouTube, is really cool, and she does lots of great hooping. And then, of course, my two hoop teachers from home, um, Nina Infinity and Carla Snow, obviously. Hi everyone, this is Nina Infinity and I'm in beautiful Bali at Sacred Secularities and today I'm going to teach you a move that I call the Whip Isolation. Are there any guy hoopers? Yeah, there's a couple that I follow on YouTube. Um, Steve Bags is really cool. He does multiple hoops. Um, Nick Guzardo and Nick Broyd are just another couple hoopers as well. And is their style like significantly different than women? Or um, Some of them. It's, they do more off-body hooping and shoulder hooping rather than around the waist. But it looks, it looks really cool. And they're often a lot faster and more powerful. So it looks pretty cool when guys hoop. I really do like the, the YouTube thing because it inspires other people. We're going to yeah. see these, these waves of ideas for tricks and also combining hula hooping with other forms of play. Exactly. Yeah. So where can somebody get a hoop and start learning tricks? Uh, well, I get my hoops from my friend who makes them, but you can get customized hoops online and um, you can start learning online as well. YouTube is a great place to start. There's also a book called Hoopla that has a lot of beginner tricks and advanced stuff. And there's you can go to workshops at music festivals and there should be classes wherever you are, local classes. Um, you can find stuff all over. What, uh, what are some of the kind of advancements or directions for the future of hula hooping? The future of hula hooping? Well, I know in the 50s when it got, became really popular, they Australia actually made it quite popular to use bamboo hula hoops but when that demand couldn't be met then they started doing plastics and now there's advanced plastics and fire attachments like you said before and now they have LED hoops so you can get flashing patterning ch color changing hoops and yeah so I think I don't know where it's going but it looks <laughs> flashy cool So is it possible to make your own hula hoop? Yeah, you can make your own hoop. Um, you just need a connector of some sort. And if you want it to be collapsible, then you need a button. Um, and some polypropylene tubing or HDPE, depending on your uh, level. When you're starting, you always want to have a bigger, heavier hoop so that the rotations are slower and it's easier to control. And then 
um, you can downsize as you start advancing. So you can also find more information about hoops and sizing and stuff on hulahooping.com. Hulahooping.com. Mm-hmm. Now, we did make some hoops here. Uh, what did you think of those? They're great, yeah. Great for starting and beginning because I think they're a bit heavier than what I'm used to. But, yeah, they're great for classes and learning. Could I use the same size tubing and just make them smaller? Or should I get smaller tubing? Both. Both, okay. Yeah. Cool. You, you want to downsize the, the weight and the size of the hoop once you start getting more advanced. I saw online that some people put weights in their hoops or sand. Do uh, you recommend that? I think weighted hoops are more for exercise, but, um, I mean, if you really wanted to, you could, but I think it might... Oh, I was going to say fuck with something. You can say fuck. Um, it's okay to say fuck. <laughs> you, you could weight them if you really wanted to, but I think they're more for exercise. But if you're doing more performance and trick stuff, I think it might might be better not to. I do have a fire hoop here. You interested? Cool. All right, maybe we'll light that up. Where does hooping come from? What do you know about the history of it? Uh, well, we do know that the Egyptians would play with hoops made of um, dried grapevines. So that's back in the day. And then in the 1800s, um, it was really popular in England. And the name hula hooping actually came from a British sailors who would go to Hawaii and then came back and thought that the motion kind of looked like the hula dancing. So that's where it got its name. And Native Americans have been dancing with hula hoops and telling stories that way for centuries as well, since the 1400s, I think. Well, cool. Thanks for sharing your thoughts on hula hooping. I'm happy to have you here, and I think we're going to have some hula hooping fun. No worries.